Hi, and uh, welcome to uh, Norton, uh, Norton Live Streams. This stream is a series of streams we're doing here at, uh, at Norton. And if you've missed our previous uh, sessions, you can catch them on our YouTube website. So that's Norton E-M-E-A YouTube website and also on our uh, Sangaban Norton uh, website for E-M-E-A also. So if you've missed something and you want to uh, catch up, please click on there. Lots of content for you to, to view and to look at. So uh, please, uh, please do so. Okay, but before we start the live stream, I'd like to just uh, quickly give you a little hint on a tool we've got within this live stream to translate uh, my English into several different languages for your for your pleasure. So if you click on uh, the little gear item in the bottom right corner of the video player, you'll see what we call closed captions, and that will bring up some subtitles to translate into your local language, hopefully. All right, so just uh, for your viewing comfort, if you need the translation on there, um, uh, please feel free uh, to do so. OK, these, uh, this session will be about uh, 30 minutes long, maybe a little more. Depends how we how we get on with this machine over here. And at the end, we'll have a question and answer session. So whilst you're watching, if you've got any questions about what we're doing, put it on the chat and we'll come to them at the uh, at the very end. OK. Uh, so, um, yeah, today we're going to be looking at uh, belt finishing with this uh, big backstand machine here, how to achieve a number four surface finish. But before we do that, let's introduce myself and uh, hopefully my colleague uh, Robin Cook is on the, on the line as well. Um, hey, Robin, how are you doing? You OK? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, so, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Paul. Uh, I live in uh, Cheshire in England. I'm an application engineer for Sangaban for MRO. Uh, so maintenance and repair operations, uh, 30 years in manufacturing, so quite a bit of experience in heavy engineering and 18 years here at, uh, in, a, in the abrasives division of, uh, of Sangalban. Uh, on for you, Robin, if you'd like to quickly introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Robin. Uh, I've been in the company 31 years now and mainly focusing now on the range of finishing and surface conditioning products that we have within our range, which you'll see a little bit of today. Thank you there, Robin. That's uh, very kind of you. Uh, OK, so uh, as we said, 30 minute long session and then we're going to be going to Q&A at the end. But uh, today we're talking about achieving a number four finish. So I think it's best that we actually set the scene for, for what we're going to do today and have a look what actually we do we mean by a number four finish. So as it says on the slide here, don't worry, there's not too many slides, only a few to go through. Uh, number four finish is actually an industry standard. It is, as we say, the most common finish, and it really is generally suited to the stainless steel industry. Because remember, carbon steel always has to be painted or covered with some kind of layer. So it, the finish is not so important. But on stainless steel, it's generally left uh, naked, if you like. So no, no finishing, no paint, no galve, nothing. It's not required because it doesn't corrode quite as easily as carbon steel. So what we need to do with stainless steel is make it look nice. And uh, one of the ways to do that is by it applying a number four finish. It gives really low gloss uh, compared to a lot of other finishes uh, that we see out there market, like a 2B, for example. And um, the reason for that, uh, why that's good, is, is because when the, the actual stainless steel item is in service in, uh, in uh, your high street or shopping centers, whatever, like balustrades, railings, in the lift, on the escalators, this low gloss brushed finish actually gives long service life without actually uh, requiring to be cleaned. So it doesn't show up dirt and a grime, et cetera, that is applied by uh, you know, high traffic areas. So it's a really nice cosmetic linear scratch finish uh, that is relatively easy to, uh, to achieve. Next. Uh, so how is it done exactly? So it is produced by sanding, what we're going to show you today, and, and generally with, uh, with belt sanding. Even in the factories where they actually produce the stainless steel, they, they send it out with typically around about a number four finish, which is about a 0.5, 0.4RA. Uh, it also it depends what kind of industry, whatever the component is going into, whether it be a dairy or a medical industry. And that finish level measured in RA, which is roughness average, is extremely important you know in the food industry and the medical industry to stop uh, bacteria or contamination forming on the uh, on the products itself so it's not just a cosmetic finish here it's actually a technical finish that can be required by end users for applications robin if you'd like to take us through the uh, rapid uh, prep family because uh, this is uh, this is your your baby yeah yeah thank you paul so we have uh, three different uh, types of uh, material 
basically the difference is on the uh, the degree of um, stiffness of, of the material. The more stiff the, the product is on the right hand side, the, the LF, which is mainly used for disc, ap disc applications, perhaps on a right angle grinder. Uh, but the two products on the left you can see are the, uh, the RF uh, and, the, and the XF. The XF being the most flexible, extra flex, uh, where uh, that's mainly used for small file belt applications. But the product that we're going to be focusing on today uh, and taking a look at to, to generate the finish that Paul just described is the RF material, which is a regular flex and is mostly used for what we would regard as narrow belt applications similar to the the type in the machine that was uh, behind Paul when we, when, we, when we first had the introduction. Uh, there are two types of um, uh, grains available in the in the material our basic aluminium oxide but we also have the vortex grain in there too but uh, yeah keep, carry on uh, Martin with the slide. Yeah, so like I said, two levels, sorry, three levels of flexibility and uh, we have a wide variety of uses and applications spanning those three uh, uh, types of material on our surface conditioning material, rapid prep belts. And it's, it's fair to say, Robin, as well, we've, we've, when you were using non-woven surface conditioning belts, uh, we have to change the speed of the machine, really. So uh, it's uh, normally when you're using a coated abrasive belt, you know, that's 30, 30 meters per second, 35 meters per second is a very common uh, uh, belt speed. But when we start to use uh, a non-woven belt, so especially the rapid prep belts, we need to reduce this down. So a speed of anywhere between 15 to 20 meters per second is better, you know, due to the fact we, we don't want to uh, create uh, heat in, in the application or potentially uh, smearing the belt. Uh, okay, so a little bit about applica applications here. So we, with uh, with rapid prep, we can remove all sorts of surface defects and give a really nice uh, finish. Uh, it's very easy to use. It's very gentle to use. Uh, it's very very good for deburring uh, products, and you know, there's no chance of creating damage in the material when you're using these kind of uh, these kind of, of belts. So. The consistency of the belt is also absolutely key. Uh, with a coated abrasive belt, the finish from a coated abrasive actually changes throughout the life of the belt as the grain uh, fractures and gets duller. So it will be a, you know, say for example, a 60 grit belt will finish finer as it gets older. With uh, non-woven rapid prep, that finish is consistent throughout the life uh, life of the belt because of the 3D 3D nature of the product. It also we can also reduce steps uh, from the application. So conventional coated, it not, you normally jump grits of uh, maybe 40, 40 grit times. You'd start with 60, then a, a 80, maybe a 120, a 150, a, a 180. But with employing the rapid prep uh, surface condition belts, you can jump these steps. And again, we will show you uh, we'll show you that and why why that's possible today. One of the key points to, to that we have, uh, one of the real additional benefits we have in our uh, rapid prep material is our clean bond resin technology. One of the difficulties with any non-woven product is what I was referring to earlier is heat and smearing and the product actually melting, which obviously if you melt the product onto the material you're grinding, you need to then remove that. With our clean bond resin technology, this actually resists uh, this uh, the phenomena of loading onto the material a lot more than any of our competitors. So it's a real big advantage to have this uh, clean bond technology inside our rapid prep uh, material. Okay, so here we back. Here we are again, back with me. So I'm going to show you a little bit about this uh, this machine before we start. Uh, this is a Metabo uh, backstand grinder, twin head, as you can see. Uh, we're going to use this wheel today because it's closest to the camera. It's pretty simple as that. Uh, it's a, I think it's an eight kilowatt machine, so it's a pretty powerful uh, beast. We have a large contact wheel here, and we will be going through uh, the belt changes on this machine because we're going to use four different types of, uh, of belt on here today. And yes, we have to be uh, very aware of what we're doing on this machine as well, because it is a bit of a, a bit of a beast. So we have to make sure we've got all our emergency stops, the one on the floor here, uh, one on here, one on the actual guard itself. So if anything goes wrong, we can switch the machine off very quickly. I also need to pay real attention to the PPE, the personal protective equipment that I'm wearing today, because it's a belt. 
you know, this, this, you may think a coated abrasive belt is not so aggressive, but these machines are designed to remove metal in, in huge, huge pieces of metal very, very quickly, as well as finishing what we're going to do today. So I'm going to be wearing some uh, leather gauntlets today, rather than the normal gloves I would wear when I'm using a portable tool like an angle grinder, just to make sure if any of my parts of my hands come into contact with this wheel, I'm not going to get... Uh, any, any issues with abrading my skin away. Also, I'm going to be wearing, obviously, flame-proof overalls, my safety boots, ear defenders, and a face mask as well for, to avoid any, any sparks going anywhere uh, and causing any damage today. So, yeah, it's a beast of a, beast of a machine. Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be achieving a number four finish on this uh, box section steel we have here. This is um, how it would look in... Uh, any customer when they have uh, the steel on uh, in their stores straight from the factory it's been it has a finish applied to it already and then it's formed into uh, this uh, box section it's welded and you see the weld is down this side and then they give it another little finish again to be honest with you just to just to brighten it up a little bit but the problem is when it arrives to uh, the customer it's covered in damage scratches scrapes and marks all over it so if we're trying to achieve, uh, you know, a decent finish on that, or a dairy, or a, or a, a medical finish on this item, it's uh, it's really uh, not looking so good at the moment. Cosmetically, it's uh, it needs to be improved. So we we need to take out all of the scratches and then reapply that finish uh, down to the 0.4 RA or the number four finish that we're going to going to achieve. And the way we do that is with uh, belts. Okay, so. Uh, a combination of belts we've got here in the overs, but first of all, we need to use a belt, a coated abrasive belt, to actually remove the, the deeper scratches and the damage on the surfaces. So, what I'm going to use today is, uh, is uh, a belt, it's our, our 946 belt, so it's a cloth back belt, a ceramic abrasive on here, and I think you can see that in the camera there, so R946, it's a ceramic abrasive on here, uh, and also uh, the backing, it's a very flexible backing on here. So we've got a J-weight uh, cloth backing. Uh, again, the reason I'm using a, a J-weight flexible uh, backing is because I don't want to force the abrasive into the material. I want to be as kind as I am uh, possibly can to the material. So I'm not going to use a heavy uh, cotton, X-weight cotton or Y-weight polyester belt because we will put the scratch too deep in the material and then we'll be struggling to remove that later on. It will take longer to remove that later on with the, uh, with the rapid pro belt. So it's a ceramic abrasive. Yes, it's aggressive, but 80 grit. Again, I don't want to use a coarse grade because I'm trying to achieve a really nice finish with this. So I want 80 grit or 120 grit is pretty much ideal for me. Again, not big particle size, but we do need to do a little bit of work. So it's a happy medium at, uh, at 80 grit. I've already installed a belt on this uh, on this head because it is a uh, little time consuming uh, to to change these belts over. So we will get ahead by uh, by having this belt ready to uh, ready to go. One thing as well, actually, this material you can see by the nature of it, it's quite uh, a matte finish on there. This means it has our what we call a super size layer on here. Okay, what we mean by super size? It's a layer of additive that we put on top of uh, of the abrasive to actually cool down uh, the grind when we're grinding stainless steel. If you tried to grind stainless steel with a, a non-supersized product, uh, you would actually create burn, all right? With, the, with this uh, supersized layer we put on top, it dissipates the heat, takes the heat out of the application, so we avoid any possibility of, uh, of burning the stainless steel surface. Right, so we might as well get on. We've got quite a bit of grinding to do. I'm just going to get rid of that belt down there for now because we already have it on the machine. Um, I'm going to get my PPE on and we'll finish the component. I'm going to take this component here. I'm going to do all four sides with the grit 80. Then I'm going to move on to the coarse uh, grade uh, rapid prep. And I'm going to leave one side with P80 and finish the other three with the coarse grade product. And then I'm going to pick a medium product from the Rapid Prep family, and I'm going to just do two sides. And then finally, we're going to finish on one side with a very fine only, and that's where we will have our number four finish. And then we can compare what the finish looks like uh, from a P80 finish to a very fine finish. Okay, great. Right, let me get my PPE on. Anything to add, Robin? 
No, you covered quite a lot already there, Paul, with the uh, the explanations on that. So just to uh, <laughs> emphasise again about the uh, the super size on the belt that you're just about to use. Yeah. Very important point to highlight again that the fact that uh, you want to keep the metal cool. Yeah. Uh, and that super size coating on the belt does exactly that. Yeah, it does indeed. Yeah, heat is our enemy with uh, with stainless steel. It really does react badly, and it can go blue or brown in colour if we put too much heat in it. So we want to be uh, quick and light and not to, not to damage any, any of this surface. Um, a little word about this machine. It does take a little while to, to slow down. Uh, so while we're doing that, we'll turn my microphone down because it's a pretty loud machine. So I'll, I will wait till the machine stops before, uh, before I talk and we, we have a look at the surface finish. Uh, so, but Robin will, uh, will keep you entertained, I'm sure. Okay. Well, just before you yeah. start again, it's worthwhile just one more time just to show the condition of the metal that you're just about to put the uh, the, 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 the the first belt stage on just so that we can see it holding it differently. Yeah, I, I, it's a good point, but I've got another another one here, Robin. So when when we when we finish, I will I will I will show the condition of this unfinished piece versus uh, each each step as we go through the through the belt stage. So yeah. We will have a look and compare and contrast uh, what that finish uh, looks like compared to how the steel arrives at the factory. Right then, so I've got all my PPE on and be ready to go. I'm just finding out how difficult it is to write on something with these gloves on. It's uh, impossible. My handwriting's not the best anyway, to be honest with you, but actually it's probably better with these gloves on. <laughs> so we have achieved a grit 80 finish on, this, uh, on the material now. So I can quickly show you how that looks on camera. I think uh, we can pick that up. So this is the, uh, on this side, this is the grit 80 and here is the unfinished product. As you can see, damage on here where as i said storage damage moving damage whatever it's a pretty dull finish on on this as well but where we've uh, finished with the belt you can see it's extremely bright now okay because the abrasive grains have cut into the surface and made that uh, you can almost see the scratches of the the grains that have gone past uh, uh, that surface of that steel but uh, but that's too bright for us the finish is too coarse uh, probably be about 1.5, 1. 1. 1.4 RA, around about that kind of uh, finish, and nowhere near the 0. 0.5, 0. 0.4 where we want to get to for the number four finish. And now we have to refine that finish a little bit more. And this is where our rapid prep belts come into their own. So uh, three different belts I'm going to use today, but I'll show you all four that I have here on there. Uh, on the on the tool first we have a coarse grade as i said before uh, you can always denote which is a coarse grade non-woven belt pretty much due to the color we don't print the grit size on the back like we do on a conventional coated because it's very difficult to print a grit size on this uh, on this on the back of this material so instead we color it uh, to note the grade and that's an important phrase to use for non-woven rapid prep products is we don't use a grit size we use a grade so you might say, well, well, coarse. Well, what is coarse? It actually contains about PATP120. So very similar uh, to this uh, coated abrasive belt grit size, but due to the 3D nature of this, uh, this product, because it's softer, it doesn't act like a, a grit, uh, a grit uh, 80. It acts a lot finer than that because it's, it's basically like your car suspension. It, it compresses when you push onto it 
uh, doesn't push the grain into the material. So even though it's a very equivalent grade to the to the P80 coated, we get a completely different uh, finish from, from that product. And that goes through all of the belts. So we have a medium belt here, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit about later. We have a fine and a very fine, all with their individual colors. But first of all, let's get this coarse belt onto the machine. I'll put this one out of the way. We'll open it up. A little bit time consuming to change over on these machines. Obviously, yeah, if you, if you, you see me doing this, it's, uh, it's one of the most time consuming parts of, uh, of doing any, any finishing job with a backstand machine. So the longer service life you can get from your belts really does give you uh, an advantage here because uh, this is downtime. This is non value added time while I'm doing this. So uh, the longer the belt lasts, uh, the better. And I think uh, we can safely say our rapid prep belts have a really good uh, lifetime when compared to uh, conventional coated and other competitive products out there in the market. So we slide this on. You have to be tall for this. Luckily, I've got my high heels on, so I'm OK today. No, safety high heels. Well, we were able to see the flexibility of that product that you mentioned earlier on there. You could really yes. see the belt flexing. Yeah, you can. So I'm just tensioning uh, the belt now and I'm clamping it off. And a little tip, when you're tensioning the belt, you say, well, how tight do you need to get the belt? Well, when it's almost like when you're doing the fan belt on your car. I don't know if anybody of you ever worked on your car before, but if you can twist the belt about halfway and it starts to resist uh, that twist, that means you've got it pretty much, uh, pretty much tight enough. It's really uh, a gauge like that to, to check your tension. So let's move it over on the wheel a bit. Uh, so again, we're going to do the same step, but on three sides of the metal, leaving the P80 finish so we can, we can compare and contrast what that finish, uh, what that finish looks like. When I first start the belt up, I'm just going to have to make sure it tracks right because it's a different shape belt. It's a bit heavier than the coated belt, so it just may move a little bit on the contact wheel. So I'm going to adjust with a little adjustment bar I've got here to track the belt going in the right, uh, the right direction. OK, so uh, let's start. Okay, sorry, I'll take my mask. So now we have our coarse finish. Remember me saying that these, the grades and grits inside these products are pretty, pretty similar. But I think now if we can show, uh, I'll turn it the right way around, if we can show a P80 finish I achieved uh, earlier versus the coarse grade of the non-woven, you can see. Uh, so we have the non-woven finish here and the P80 here. You can see those bright, sparky lines that you have on the P80 finish are starting to be blended away. All right, so we're getting a much more uh, homogenous kind of uh, finish on there. And you can easily see that. You've even taken out some of the dents and marks on the surface structure. You see it's a lot smoother now, having used the non-woven belt again because of the softness of the product, the conformability of the product, and just the nature of the uh, a rapid prep belt uh, works on your, on your component. So yeah, it's already starting to get nice. We'll be about, I think about 0.8.9 RA at this stage, around about that kind of uh, finish. I'll just uh, juggle these about. I'll leave my finish component here. Uh, I need to write on here as well, coarse grade with my gloves. So we're, uh, we're seeing those finish differences pretty well, Paul, and the, yeah. the it's coming up pretty good. Excellent. It's impossible to write with these things, right? Okay, so let's change the belt over now. So again, you may 
you may wonder, I'm not switching off the machine uh, when I'm changing the belt. The reason I don't need to do that on that machine is because we have an isolator switch. So as soon as I take open this uh, guard on the side of the machine, there's no chance the machine is now cut off. So there's no chance it will start while I've got my hands inside here. So we're uh, safety first. So slacken off the belt. And we could take that off there. Okay, so now we move on to the medium grade belt. So what I'm doing now is I'm now blending again the scratches that are left or the finish that's left from the coarse gray belt. So I'm going to use the rapid prep medium. Always maroon in color, I think is the best way to describe this color. Uh, this has about grade 150, 180 in, uh, in this product, around about that kind of grit. But again, it's used a much finer finish than the conventional coated product uh, with that equivalent uh, grade on there. So let's get it in the machine and get that piece of bar finished. Easier said than done. Hold on. So these products come in uh, four different grades. Uh, so from coarse, as Bob has just demonstrated, go to the medium, which is the more maroon colour, the green, fine, and then at the end, the very fine, which is a blue colour. Yeah, we have, we have all of those here as well, as you say, Robin. So uh, uh, as Robin says, we have the green here, which is our fine grey product. And uh, not everybody has this in their offering, this, so about... P, uh, P220 in this product, and then our, our very fine product, which is always blue, uh, P220, P280, P320, around about this kind of grade size. All made with the same backing, all the same material, just a different type of, uh, of uh, abrasive, different size abrasive grain inside. Right, so we're, we're, we're on, we're tensioned, just, uh, and I think we're almost tracked, so I'll finish now. Not the P80, not the coarse. I'm going to do these other two sides where we have the coarse grade, and then I'll finish finally with the, the very fine on the last side. Um, just a little word about the, uh, the contact wheel here. So this is what we call a contact wheel on, on a machine. Um, it's very important, the grade uh, and type of contact wheel that you use for this finishing step. So ideally, it needs to be anywhere between 40 and 60 sure hardness, that's sure A, to ensure Again, that you're not pushing the abrasive into the product. It's soft, it's smooth, it's conformable. It, it bends a little bit when, you put, uh, when you're putting pressure on there or putting your component in there. You don't get chatter marks on there from, uh, from a ridge wheel. This wheel's a little bit hard today. It's about a, a 60, 70 sure wheel, and it is serrated. So it does have serrations in there. Normally, they, that helps with aggression in that application. So if you're using a 36, 40 grit belt, it helps the belt bite into the material that a little bit more. But it's only, I think... Uh, three to one land to groove ratio. So for today, it's okay. I would prefer a little bit softer and maybe a plain wheel to get the perfect finish, but most customers are not changing their, their contact wheels. So these products have to be able to withstand and produce the, the right finish, even with uh, the wheel that's not exactly, uh, exactly ideal. Right, <clears throat> let's start up the machine again and I'll track the belt and then we can start to get our, our medium grade uh, finish. Result uh, are different again from the, uh, the original E80 ceramic grade build. I'm going to finish that leaves here. Right, just mark on here medium. 
on that one side and then i'll show you again <clears throat> the finish we have compared to the uh p80 after our first grind because i think that's the most visual uh visual difference i think you take that to the camera again the close up on martin you can keep tilting paul that'll be helpful yeah difficult to focus on on this so yeah there we go you can see again we're getting really really fine finish on there again a lot of the damage taken out from uh from the rolling process and the uh, the scratch is looking very, very uh, uniform. Uh, this finish could be good enough uh, for for some people, for some customers. That may just be uh, cosmetically good enough for the application. And I think if you're trying to think where you would see this this finish would be uh, probably in your own home, to be honest with you. I mean, when you, you look at uh, things like uh, the handles for your uh, cooker, your refrigerator, what we call white goods, often, this is the finish that is good enough for them because they are high use items. We're grabbing that, pulling it open, they get knocked, they get scraped. If it's too fine a finish, then that damage that's done over the time uh, can look uh, quite poor. So this kind of finish is pretty good for these really high traffic uh, areas such as handles and, and doors, etc. Even the front of your fridge at home. I certainly have a stainless steel one uh, in, in my kitchen and it is this exact uh, brushed uh, finish on there. Uh, not too not too bright but we're going to go a step further and use our very fine belt which is the the blue belt here you may wonder why i'm not using our green belt the fine grade belt and why i'm not using that as a stage i mean you can if you want a really flawless finish but to be honest we can miss a step here we can go straight to the very fine because we already have a, a good finish from the medium uh it will probably be a little bit better with the the, the green belt but you can miss a stage here and jump straight to the very fine. And again, we were discussing on the PowerPoint how this product can help you to reduce grinding steps if you're using conventional coated. We can get to a number four finish in four steps alone. So it's uh, really handy. It's, it's a very time consuming operation. Okay, let's get this belt off. Untension. <clears throat> Put him down there in my perfect storeroom on the floor. Let's get him on. When we just say we have now in terms of RE and after that last step. Ah. Sorry, Robin, what was that? I was just asking Paul an open question. Uh, where would you say we are in terms of RA level after that last step? After the uh, medium grade, I'd say we're around, around about uh, 0.6 to 0.7, I would say. Okay. So you can see how we're, where we're getting to and the progress that we're getting from what Paul showed in the slides earlier on uh, in terms of some of the finish levels that uh, are required in, uh, in, 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 in industry. Yeah, and we, we talk about, uh, like we say, medical finishes, uh, Robin, and uh, um, probably one of the, besides the medical, one of the more important is the dairy finish. So we mean uh, food food standards, so food hygiene, so, you know, all your milk, milk tilers and tanks and pipe work that you're having and factories, etc. even down to the uh, the stainless steel kitchen surfaces, that's where that's where we're looking at with this these kind of products. That's why it's important that we achieve that finish. And it's completely, uh, again, we use the word homogenous all the time, so it's a consistent finish. Uh, across the whole width right last stage now the belt's on let's uh get the machine started i'll track the belt again and then i'll do the final finish on uh, on one side of this uh, one remaining side of this uh, piece of material which is this one and make sure i get that right okay off we go
again, as you can see, another evidence there of how quick and efficiently these belts will deliver that this finish level. Brilliant. Okay, as you can see, that was uh, that was really quick to do. To be honest with you, it takes very little pressure, very little time, um, and also you probably notice when uh, the camera when the camera was at this angle. When you're getting ever finer on these products, there's barely any sparks. And the reason is, is because we're really removing hardly anything from the, uh, the surface of the material. If you weighed this before and after, there wouldn't be hardly any difference in, in, in the weight of the, the component. All we're doing is we're taking off the peaks, off the, off the valleys and troughs uh, uh, that we've got, sorry, the valleys and the peaks uh, uh, on, on the surface. So we're just taking that top layer off and bringing that down, which gives us a lower roughness average, so a lower RA, as we say. Uh, so that's the finish now we've got the very fine. So let me uh, first of all show you that versus the Grit 80 product, and then I'll show you where we started as well. So if we get the camera back on the close-up and I work out which is left and which is right, there you can see. You can see how the light is reflecting off that. It's much flatter. Uh, as we said, it's kind of a, uh, a nice, it's not, not a, it's not a hugely bright finish like the P80, uh, again, because it looks more more smooth, uh, yeah, and again, I'm sure you've seen this finish everywhere you go, as it is the most uh, the most common. Let's have a look how it looks versus uh, how where we started, the factory finish, where the product uh, how the product arrives. And if you have a look here, you, you can see the difference. So here we have the factory finish. You can see lots of rough parts, scratches, dents, and scrapes on the product. On the finished product, it's perfectly flat and uh, uniform which is exactly what we are looking for another benefit you have with this kind of finish is the fact um, uh, and the reason for the finish we said uh, the longer surface uh, service life uh, without uh, needing to be cleaned is now when we put our, our finger and we touch it you can't see where i've uh, i've done that or it does limit uh, the dirt that remains from from that kind of thing and so high traffic areas again are going to really benefit from this uh, this number four, uh, number four finish. Okay, so uh, so that's it uh, uh, for the number four finish. You saw how quick uh, we were able to do it, and how easy it is to do. Even I can do it, so it must be uh, must be really easy. Robin, anything to add? No, I was just uh, on the last one there, Paul. I'm just uh, highlighting again the, the, the you get these belts to the desired surface level. Uh, as quickly and efficiently as possible. It's really, uh, I think the last belt really highlighted it, how, how quickly the, you were able to achieve that level. Uh, That's the the whole idea of it, isn't it, Robin, is is to do exactly that. Yeah, it really is. Uh, and, and and that consistency the product gives you. So you, even if you've got an automated process with, uh, you know, multiple heads and the sheets of material going through your, your machine, the belts will give you a continually the same finish from uh, from the start of the life till the end of the life of, of the product and that uh, that does help you a lot um one other way that we see customers use these non-woven type products to get an even better finish than we have now is by using some kind of uh, coolant or uh, oil-based uh, lubricant so if we had uh, uh, an oil-based lubricant in there it would actually give us an even better finish with that uh, so I've seen customers use pure oil in, in, as a coolant in, uh, or a lubricant in their process, which uh, gives a really, really special finish to this, uh, this product. But obviously on this machine, it's not possible because it would be everywhere. So not a good idea for that. But they do withstand uh, coolants, emulsions and uh, neat oil, whatever you do. They're completely inert to, uh, uh, to any kind of fluids uh, that you can get on there. Uh, so, yeah. Easy to achieve the ultimate finish with a combination of our coated products and our rapid prep uh, non-woven surface conditioning belts. Uh, very nice. Okay, so um, I think that's it for, for today. Have you got anything that to add uh, to, the, to that, Robin? No, it's excellent. Well demonstrated, Paul, and we were able to see the difference in the finishes from the camera work from Martin there. So, uh... Yes. Yeah, thanks to you for joining and uh, giving some great commentary over the, the, the time I'm, I'm working on this machine. And again, thanks to Martin for, for the camera work. As always, good job, my friend. 
Uh, thanks to you guys for attending uh, our live streams. Again, uh, if you've missed any of the ones uh, we've done before, they're available on your YouTube channel and also on the Norton EMEA website. So take a look at that. Join us in a month's time. Uh, we'll be doing another set of uh, live streams in the morning and in the afternoon, second Friday of, uh, of June. So please, uh, you're more than welcome to join it. Tell your friends, bring them along, have a picnic. I don't know, have some fun. But uh, uh, to those of you who are watching uh, uh, this on YouTube, uh, a recorded session. Thanks for thanks for watching, and we'll see you again later. Bye bye.